one of the dads um, of the boys uh, said, oh, I'll, I'll get um, five straws out and whoever draws the shortest straw has to learn how to sing. So that's how my singing career started. What would you like to be? Tell me everything I need to know. With or without a reality, there's a reason that we need to go. There's a reason that we need to fly. Welcome back. Happy New Year, guys. I hope you had a very fun, festive, silly season. Um, I hope you went to some music because fuck, it's good to see it come back and see people dancing and having the greatest of times. Um, I know that I had a great time. I did try and keep it very, very safe though. I, um, I only went to one festival out of the three that I was meant to go to, um, just because my sister is getting married and I knew that if I went, I would be amongst everyone else getting COVID right now. So yes, I only got to get amongst it for once, but that's okay. Um, I hope you guys all had fun. I hope Santa was fucking great to you. And I hope that 2022 is going to be a year that we will not forget. Um, in a good way, not in a fucking shit way like the last two. Um, but this year it's going to be very, very exciting. We're so excited to have you along the ride. Um, and let's get into it. Today on the podcast, we have Benny from Boo Seeker. To take you back to how Benny and I met, um, it was actually during the Australian bushfires. Uh, Well, just after actually. We met on um, a gig. I was actually working on the Bushfire Appeal Day Party in Melbourne. um, And I was just in absolute awe. I was working with Dina Amy, um, which she unfortunately couldn't actually be there that day. So I ended up being a bit of a patron for the day. Um, And I sat with the Baxter Vodka guys side stage watching Ben from Boosica and I was in absolute awe. The guy is a fucking rock star. If you haven't seen him perform, you need to. He owns the stage and I'm so excited to be talking with him today. Here we are with Benny from Boosica. What a perfect little Monday afternoon. I know, right? I feel like it's Sunday and I love it. That's great. Here we are. Cheers. See, this is the good thing about the music industry. You don't really have to care about what day it is. Unless you've got to be somewhere, it can just be like, eh, it can be Sunday. It might be Monday, but it's going to be Sunday. Could be. It could be. It doesn't matter if it's 9 a.m. or 5 p.m. I'm always it's 5 p.m. somewhere. Hey, if you said you want a glass of wine at 9 a.m., I'd probably still drink it. So <laughs> I'm, all for it. I'm all for it. I love it. So basically what we like to start with is we like to start with something that's in your phone. So it's like the last song that you've listened to, the last text, the last video, last photo. Okay. I'm going to say it's going to be something funny just to look at your camera reel. What's like the last thing on your camera reel? Let's have a look. I feel feel like you picked a safe one here. No, because I feel like if Matt's texting you, it's something work related. No, I think it looks like I've like pocket screenshotted in my thing and I've got like the map of the Gold Coast or something <laughs> on my phone. That was today at 10.59 a.m. That looks like a screenshot from a car, like your car. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like I've been taking screenshots like in my pocket or something. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I've got a picture of Tustin's bike. Not entirely sure. That why, bike's gangster. Well, I've got that. Um... Yeah, I mean, we can keep that's going. That's it. No, that's it. That's you're bo- not that. Yeah, you're not boring. that. Yeah, you're boring. Yeah, sorry. It's like, all right, Benny. It's fine. And yeah, I was thinking you were going to ask about messages. I'm like, man, you can go through all my messages. There's nothing in there that's. Nah, nothing. messages I think would be boring. It'd be all work stuff. It is. Yeah. Oh, well, I got out of that pretty well. Yeah, you got out of that really well. <laughs> it wasn't probably worth recording. To be Matt's was actually fucking hilarious. What was it? It was just this weird screenshot from a client about like crazy, crazy, like instrumental details, like down to like, it was actually pretty funny. Get well, to I'm be sorry together, I can't beat that. No, nah, that's but all right. No worries. My bad. No stress. <laughs> so tell me, how did Boo Seeker come about? Uh, it came out of, I was in a band prior to Boo for nine years um, with my schoolmates. Literally, so long story cut short, our music teacher at the time pressured me and the boys to go into a like a band competition, the same one that Silverchair won actually. They pushed us in to do that. None of us could sing, none of us wanted to sing. 
Um, so one of the dads um, of the boys uh, said, oh, I'll, I'll get um, five straws out and whoever draws the shortest straw has to learn how to sing. So that's how my singing career started. Oh, my God, I love that. That's so great. It's like leaving it up to chance. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, I've never had a singing lesson or anything in my life, so I'm, it's going to be – can we swear on here or not? Yeah, yeah sweet. Yeah. It's going to be fucked <laughs> for some reason. I can't sing anymore. Um, and then, yeah, we won that, which gave us kind of a lot of motivation to just pursue it. And we were just five 18-year-old guys that had – a reason to go surfing every day basically and just play music on a weekend did that for nine years and then it was like the saddest day of my life when the guys came to me and said we're going to stop basically like we're not making money out of it and we want to you know do the normal life kind of thing and I thought my life had ended and then literally I was like I've got nothing else in life to do so I'm going to write some more songs and wrote a song called Kingdom Leader and stuck it up on Triple J Unearthed. And two One, weeks later, Boo Seeker just went boom and away we went. So that's all I've been doing for the last five and a half years now. Love that. That's one so of my favourite songs it too. Wouldn't have happened, Boo Seeker wouldn't have happened if that band ended. I'd still be in that van with no air con or anything, sitting in my underpants with five smelly guys just <laughs> cruising around <laughs> Australia. So, yeah, it all comes down to that moment. Yeah, I love that. So I guess what, if you could put it back to one moment, like one moment being that boss moment where you were like, fuck, I can't believe it. Would it be that moment? Would it be winning Triple J Hotters 100? Or, oh, sorry, not 100, um, Unearthed? Or would it be like, you have two, like, is there a moment that you're like, fuck? I think the moment was when we, I was still, we had one, one gig left with the old band and it was on King Island and it was like the week prior to that kingdom leader had just been picked up on triple j and it was all on the radio and i was sitting in the rent a car with the guys going to the gig and we i came up on the radio and how everyone, good and is every, that well it was good but it was an awkward fucking moment because they're like fuck we've been chasing this for nine years yeah and true. you're literally sitting next to us and this shit's blowing up so i think that moment but they were really like they were so supportive and they were they knew that they were the ones that had kind of made the decision and whatnot but i think in that moment i knew that everything i'd done with those guys in the nine years prior yeah. had set me up ready to go for yeah. what boo seeker was about to bring me and honestly boo seeker from that first week it was just straight into fifth gear like i was learning so much stuff and not well not really having the time to learn i just had to Go with it. Go with it and just yeah. do it as it came. So, yeah, I think that moment I was like, holy shit, here we go. Yeah, thing. love that. Yeah, it was and cool. So, like, would what would be, like, the worst moment, like a bad moment or a beneficial moment for you that you're, like, you've learnt from? Like, would it would it be kind of, like, in that transition, like, into being on your own or? I th yeah, I don't want to get all sentimental, but I think that moment of, like, just backing yourself. Like, yeah. at the moment when the guys said they didn't want to do it anymore, like... I was just so bummed. Yeah. You know, but for me, it was like, well, i got nothing else to yeah. do and I just want to do this. You yeah. know, I just want to keep going. Are you still friends with these guys? Yeah, fucking love yeah. them to death. You know, I Sick. cut my teeth doing all this stuff. We still keep in contact. Most of them have got one or two kids now. Yeah. And I feel like I'm the only one out of all my friends that don't have kids. It's really weird. You and me both, babe. Don't <laughs> worry. It's a sweet spot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just... I don't know. Like I, I, I honestly am so thankful for that nine years with those guys that got me ready for everything that was to come with Boo Seeker. Yeah. I think it's made it a lot easier for me. Yeah. For sure. That's cool. And um, so with being on tour, because like, I mean, we were meant to go on tour together this year, obviously. <laughs> Fucking COVID. <laughs> I know. Let's piss off. I know, but I think we're on tour together next year, which that'll be fun. Fingers um, crossed. Fingers crossed. But with being on tour, like, well, I mean, the day, what we do right now, living in a crazy world, obviously in the music industry, which has been hit the absolute most hardest, what do you do, like, to stay grounded, to stay balanced, like, for your mental health, for clarity, for anything? Like, what do you do other than drink wine? <laughs> Moving to Jay's joint. <laughs> Jay's sitting over here on the ground listening to us. Um, <laughs> basically, no. Nah, I, I, honestly, it's it's been such a shit year. Not yeah. just for me, but for everybody in the industry. And I think just 
staying close and being around the closest people to you in these hard times and definitely with people that are in this industry as yeah. well. Like I feel, I don't know about you, but I felt like there was a lot of separation with a lot of people within the 100%. industry. 100%. Where it was like you're either in the, this corner or you're in that corner. And I feel that COVID has kind of pissed that off now. I feel like we all know that we're in this together and yeah. we're figuring it out ourselves. And we've just got to be there for each other. So I think that's really helped. Everyone's mm. just really wanting to help each other. Yeah. Um, I think like in our industry, it's been really interesting... Like, I've been such a hard person where I don't really show vulnerability whatsoever. Oh, you and me both. But this 18 months, um, like, I mean, Lauren saw me break down this morning. Like, like you've just kind of got to break down those walls and cry when you need to cry and have the right people around you, you know, to like, 100%. make you feel like you're okay. Like, Matt, I, Matt Butler sent me, me a message this morning and I was just like, it's just having those people checking in and going, no, you're okay. Don't stress. Uh, Makes you feel so much better. We're, we're all going through it. Yeah, 100%. And there's going to be good days and there's going to be shit days. And the people that have been down, you know, a week before, you're there for them. And, you know, when it's your turn to be a bit shitty, they're there for you. And, and it's been it's been really nice to have those people around you through these shit moments. And I think we've all just realised that, you know, as much as the music industry is a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like you never know what's going to happen. Mm. It's, it's never been more like that yeah. at the moment. So, yeah. you know, where you'd be getting things ready six to eight months in advance. It's like, you don't know if a gig's going to happen 48 hours out. You yeah. Know? So it's just kind of, yeah. Yeah, no. Changing with the times. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even know if you're going to get on the flight the next day. <laughs> oh, no, it's crazy. We were supposed to go to Tasmania on, what day was it? Last Friday, Last wasn't it? Last Friday, I think. And we found out Friday morning that we're not going. So yeah. It's just, it's crazy, crazy times. Yeah. But so now well. I think we're all just shrugging our shoulders and just going, it's just what it is. Yeah. I'm planning um, events for next year and, I mean... The amount of like redos that obviously I've had to do from oh. this year, I'm kind of like, what's the point? But I have faith. I'm just keeping the positive vibes going because otherwise, like, what is there? Well, I what think are we that's what we want to do. Yeah, you know, I think you've got two options: to ride with it and keep mm. going, or pack your bags and start something else. Yeah, I don't think this thing's over yet. Nah, definitely just not. Just gotta keep rolling. Um, so when you're not performing, when you're not on stage, like, who are you? Like, have you got a weird hobby? Like, is there? Something that, you know, that we don't know about you? Uh, I don't know if our weird hobby. I like cooking. I like You're cooking actually a lot. fabulous chef from what I hear. I've moved in with Jay and, and his family and it's, it's great because I actually, like, my whole family loves cooking. So sometimes we fight about who is cooks. Money, like, who cooks. But with Jay's family, like, nah, <laughs> you can cook every night. So yeah. I'm all for it. I love it. Pour I, myself um, a glass of wine and just... Put on some music and just chill. And when we had family dinner that a few weeks ago at Pixie's house, oh, you were yeah. the one that was giving Pixie the pointers for the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you've got a vegan cooking a chicken, yeah, <laughs> it, it just, things may go wrong. But it was actually really. It good. was delicious. It was, it delicious. was so good. It was so good. Thanks, Pix. <laughs> um, so, what would I guess like? What would your backup plan be if music died? I, I guess think cooking is all I've got. Really. Yeah, watch maybe out, I'll Jamie just, Oliver. Maybe I'll just move into Jay's place twenty four seven. I'll be like paid chef, daddy, daddy daycare kind of vibes. Look after Tustin and just cook all day. It sounds like a perfect, perfect backup plan. Oh, for me. Yeah, I would love that backup plan. I need to sit in this backyard or the front yard. You like all a stay at home dad wine. without having to be the dad. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It sounds perfect. To me. So good. Um, and what is, what would you say would be your like best to a story or like your spiciest like story? Oh shit. That's PG. Oh, uh, it doesn't have to be PG. You can, oh, I don't it know. can be I as There's a few, there's, there's a few, a few that has to stay on tour. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to, yeah, there's some fucking wild shit that's happened on tour. Um, what's happened? We were in America one time, uh, touring and someone came on the tour bus and we didn't realize that that person was still in the bus and we'd driven 17 hours <gasps> away from where she lived. <laughs> she was with one of the, the tour crew, not, not with our band, but with the band that we were touring with. And then she just rose from one of the bunks 
<laughs> and realised that she was 17 hours away from home. What did you do? Fly her back? Yeah, they flew her home. <laughs> really nice. But everyone was so confused. Like, I woke up to go to the bathroom through the night on the bus and saw her just, like, wake up, head up. And I was like, who the fuck is this? And, yeah, all of a sudden, everyone's like, we have a random person on the bus and we need to fly them back home. So that was probably a PG version of... of Some crazy happened. shit. But yeah, that was a... That was a pretty weird time. Yeah, sure. I love that. I re- the other week when you guys played at Brisbane, Trifford, I loved that Matt like conned some girls into helping pack up all the equipment just to buy T-shirts and they were allowed to come backstage. That That's was the like, hustle. Yeah. The hustle of Matt Bartlam. I you love it. You pack my gear and, uh, <laughs> and buy a T-shirt and you can come backstage. And he, the and best have a thing wine. was he didn't even give the T-shirts. He just got the 20 bucks oh, for the no, T-shirts. I heard about that. He didn't even give the T-shirts their money <laughs> I that's heavy it. that's heavy um okay well i know that there's some new i know there's some goss there's some cool things happening for you um when is the album coming out well it's a bit of a change of plans again I've, uh, as covid is all the plans always change but it's definitely i've been saying it for the last two years and it's driving me nuts but it, the record is a hundred percent coming out but um it's really nice to know that the new team that has gotten behind Boo in the last six months, really believes in this new record and believes there's a, a lot of really good songs on it. So we're just going to take our time and release a, a song from November. We're going to release a song every uh, six to eight weeks. Yeah, cool. Until there's probably four or five songs out and then we're going to drop the album. So cool. hopefully mid next year, but it'll be a constant constant release of music coming into 2022 i'm That's calling epic. it 20, i'm campaigning 2020 boo yeah <laughs> i love it I'm, I'm all for it I'm, I'm all for that you should get t-shirts 2020 <laughs> I know, boo i know we'll some people it. think it's really corny but i'm like no nah, i'm running it I'm we'll running sell it. it when you after you when we need to pack up your stuff we'll sell them all and get the people over to help <laughs> perfect let's do it <laughs> um okay so we're just going to end with a bit of a lull today mm-hmm. so fuck marry kill Right? The game is Fuck, Marry, I've Kill. I've never played this, so I feel like... Oh, I'm you've... Gonna, what? I'm going to get... I don't know what this is, but it sounds terrible, and I'm going to get stuffed up here. This yeah. is one of my favourite games to play, especially when I'm travelling. It's, like, such a good thing when you're just, like, having drinks. You're sitting in, like... I'll never forget, I was at Havar in Croatia with one of my girlfriends, and we played Fuck, Marry, Kill over about five bottles of rosé. Because, like, it is just that easy to play with so many people just constantly walking about. Trying to come up with answers in my head before you even ask them. No, so I'm going to give you the, the three people that you have to choose. So you oh, choose, right. like, okay, this could, yeah. Okay. All right, so you've got it. Jay, who obviously plays in your band. Yeah. And then you've got Hayden James. Oh, fuck me. And then you've also got Kim Churchill. Come on. <laughs> I did it to the boys the other day. You were in there. That is they all said they'd marry fuck. you. <laughs> What'd you say? Jay, marry me. Yeah, Jay and Matt both said they'd marry you purely because of your food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you got Kim, Kim Jay, Jay, and Hayden. Hayden. That's such a shit game. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I could at least come up like I was going to be like I'd kill COVID and you know be boring, but this is shit out. Um, oh man, this is fucked. Well, I'm going to marry Jay then for sure. If he's already, you know, proposed to me, then I'm definitely going to say yes. <laughs> what was it? Marry what? Fuck, marry, kill. Fuck, marry, kill. Oh, this is hard. Come on. Don't read into it too much. Uh, You'd kill yeah, Hayden. I, yeah, I'd have to fuck him and kill Hayden. I'm sorry, brother. I love you. <laughs> I only just met you, but this, that's the shit game. There's three people that I really love right I now. I know. That's what's the best oh, bit. That's, that's what's terrible. the best bit. Who came up with that game? Oh, my God. It, like, everyone. It's like everyone a never ever ever. No, I don't like that game at all. That's <laughs> That's shocking. Well, you, you did it. Think, I mean, I love Kim Churchill, but fucking my best mate, that's just bizarre. I know. You just, well, you've just killing, had to fuck him. You're killing, killing Hayden. Hayden. Oh. Hayden's in ho- hotel quarantine at the moment anyway. He probably he probably I'm, wants to be I'm killed. I'm really sorry, man. I was in a rock No, we love Hayden. Yeah. Hayden's the best. Lovely guy. Well, thanks so much, Benny. It's been such no, a pleasure. Thanks for the bottle of wine. Oh, you're Great. welcome. Anytime. I'm ready to, I'm just going to stay here now. You can pack up the stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to cruise here. Light a fire, cook some food. I'm I'm ready for the afternoon. Well, we'll stay for dinner then. Thanks so much. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect.
Thanks so much for listening, guys. We will link the artists, Instagram and Spotify in our show notes. Please like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram, TikTok and YouTube to stay up to date with your favourite artists. We'll see you next week. Side stage. Yeah.